Hey everyone, today I'm having a look at two PC water cooling reservoirs from coolants. The RP401X2 on the left, which fits into a single 5.25 inch bay, and the RP452X2 on the right, which fits into two 5.25 inch drive bays. Now both these reservoirs fit dual pumps and you can use them in a number of configurations. Dual loops with dual pumps or dual pumps for a single loop or a single pump for a single loop. Okay, first of all I'm going to take a look at the RP452X2. This is actually revision 1.2 of this reservoir. There's a revision 1.3 out now which has a number of differences. Just some optimizations. This reservoir fits dual coolants PMP 450 or 450S pumps. Now these pumps have been rebadged and manufactured by a number of different companies. I won't go over all the different names but they all look almost exactly the same. So basically if the pump looks the same or similar to the coolant's PMP 450 or 450S then it will fit into this reservoir. Okay now time to have a look at what's included with the reservoir. Okay so you get two insulation guides. They have pictures they're quite easy to follow. One of them shows you how to install the pumps into the reservoir and the other one shows you how to install an included component. This one just here. I'll actually show you what this is for shortly. Also included is a couple of spare o-rings. These are for actually when you pull the front off there is o-rings around each of the separate reservoirs under this faceplate. Also included is some silicon grease for putting onto the o-rings before installing them to hold them in place and help them seal better. Four screws to install the reservoir into the 5.25 inch base and also an extra cap which I will show you what this is for shortly. Alright, looking from the front of the reservoir you can see the two separate reservoir compartments. This faceplate is obviously in black you can also get it in silver so you can see this here now this unscrews from the right hand side of the reservoir and it's actually for separating the two reservoirs so that's what that extra cap is actually for when you remove this you obviously still need to seal these, uh, this hole in the side of the reservoir Okay, so this included part here is actually an optional bleed pipe that can help with bleeding the air when using the upper reservoir here. And this actually just sits in there like that. I'll just show you the instruction manual so you can see how, how it fits in place. So that's it there. That's the upper reservoir with the faceplate removed and this optional bleeding pipe in place. Alright, so now having a look from the side of the reservoir so you can see how thick that front window is. It's an acrylic window. It's about five millimeters thick. Now what this is for here is LEDs. So you can guide the wires through here and then two three millimeter LEDs can be plugged in there. Okay now this is where the pumps are installed. So there's an acetyl blocker installed in this side of the reservoir. This is for if you're only going to be using one pump in the reservoir for a single loop. Okay, so the pump fits inside this cylinder and then it screws in and holds the pump in place. There's a lot of finger marks on it at the moment. It really needs to be cleaned off a bit. Okay, so there's a threaded end, so that's what the cylinder looks like and to install the pump you just got to remove it and a little bit has to be done to the pump too you got to pull it apart a little bit but that's all in the instruction okay so looking from the back you can see the ins and outs for each reservoir 
for each pump. On this side, so you can actually see how the pump fits into it and where the coolant is directed. You've got the two 3mm LED holes again. Now for a look at the top. So you've got two fill ports, one for each reservoir. So you can see how it's machined out of a solid piece of acetal. Looking from the bottom. So some of you might be thinking that this reservoir restricts flow. They consider that this reservoir fits into dual 5.25 inch bays and fits two pumps. The two pumps that it fits are actually the two pumps that I'm using in this build. So these are Swiftec MCP655s which this reservoir fits as well. Okay, so look at where I've got the pumps sitting. This is a dual loop system. There's two reservoirs. 150mm reservoirs. There's one there and there's also one there at the back. It's a bit hard to see because of the reflection. Look at how much space that takes up. Those two reservoirs and those two pumps. Consider that all of that can be compacted into that one little unit and hidden away up there into two 5.25 inch bays that you know they're hardly ever used 5.25 inch bays there's always plenty to spare okay that's for a start how much space would be saved secondly look at all the 90 degree corners that I've had to all these 90 degree fittings that I've had to use those fittings are extremely expensive as well and they also restrict flow because there's so many 90 degree turn. So compared to the configuration that I have in my system I'd say in this reservoir the flow restriction would be even less so the performance could possibly be even better and it would take up the hell of a lot less space. Okay this is an optional extra that can be purchased separately for the RP452X2 and you can use this if you're going to be using serial pumps dual pumps for a single loop. Okay, so what is included is this piece of acrylic with an o-ring, this piece of tubing and also three screws to hold the acrylic in place. Now the acrylic is designed to completely bypass the lower left hand reservoir. What needs to be done to install it is you obviously need to remove the front window to access the existing piece of acrylic. The existing acrylic needs to be removed and this needs to be put in its place. So this actually completely seals off this left hand side reservoir. Now what can be done to still fill this reservoir for aesthetic purposes is you can remove this piece here and install the standard plug so that this reservoir can fill into this reservoir. So this piece of tubing gets installed like that. So what all this does is completely bypasses one of the reservoirs and only uses the pump on that particular side. Alright so now it's time to have a look at the RP401X2. So as I mentioned previously, this reservoir fits into a single 5.25 inch bay and it fits dual pumps. Coolant's PMP 400 pumps. Now again, these pumps fall under quite a number of different names. So basically if the pumps look the same or similar, then they probably fit into this reservoir. I'm not going to go over all the different names. Alright, so included with the reservoir is a number of screws for installing the pumps as well as installing the reservoir into a 5.25 inch bay. Also a concise installation guide and manual, very easy to follow with pictures. So looking from the front of the reservoir you can see the two separate reservoirs. The faceplate can be removed and replaced with a silver faceplate as well. Looking from the side of the reservoir, you can see the mounting holes for mounting it into a 5.25 inch bay. You can also see where the pumps are installed. Okay, so here and here is where the wiring can be slotted through for the pumps. 
and you can see the inlets and outlets for each of the reservoirs and pumps. So this side has an acetyl blanking plate in place so that you can just install one pump for a single loop. You can see that this reservoir has the same acrylic 5mm thick front window. It's also made out of a solid piece of acetyl. Now looking from the top of the reservoir, you can see the fill ports for each of the reservoirs. You can also see that you can install two 3mm LEDs into the top of the front acrylic window here and you can lay the wires in down along the top of the reservoir here and out through the back just there. You can see the, I think it's the inlet for the pump and then it goes out through there. Now looking from the bottom of the reservoir. So this is where you can access some of the different configurations. Okay, so I've just pulled these plates off the bottom here. Now this plate doesn't actually really need to be pulled off to access any of the configurations. I just pulled it off to show you that this comes directly from the top of the pump and then this goes into the back of the actual reservoir. Okay, now this plate needs to be pulled off if you want to connect the two reservoirs together. The RP401X2 also has an optional extra that can be purchased separately to improve flow when using serial pumps, dual pumps in a single loop. So it's the same concept. It actually looks extremely similar. The parts are almost exactly the same. You get a piece of acrylic with an o-ring, you get three screws and also the piece of tubing for on the back. So it's the same thing, the faceplate and the front window needs to be removed, the existing acrylic needs to be removed and this is then put in its place to seal off and bypass this left hand reservoir. The piece of tubing also fits on the back like that. The left hand reservoir could still then be filled for aesthetic purposes by removing the base plate and undoing the cap underneath which blocks the flow between the two reservoirs so that the coolant can flow from the right reservoir to the left reservoir. So coolant sure has broken some rules with these two amazing reservoirs to be able to fit two incredibly high performance pumps into such a small form factor is really amazing and in doing that they haven't restricted much flow. This is certainly something I'd consider for any one of my systems because like I explained before when we had a look at my system how much could it clean up a design, a water cooling design compacting all those components, the pumps and the reservoirs and hiding them away into the 5.25 inch bays could clean up a build endlessly. It would just look amazing. Keep your eyes out. I will certainly be using at least one of these reservoirs in a future build of mine. So that sums up this review. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you want to see more.